Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Jahan Kirpa Sumru. I am Assistant Professor at Electrical Engineering Department, Sakharai University. Today we will review a research paper, AC for Right Through Capability of BAC HVDC Transmission System. Now basically, uh, this paper proposes uh, AC fault right through technique uh, that ensures that if uh, the asymmetrical or symmetrical fault is happening uh, at uh, either grid during to that fault, uh, the point of common coupling uh, 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 voltage dip will happen or voltage interruption may happen and uh, that may result into our voltage and uh, our under voltage but in this case only our voltage scenario is considered so we do not want this DC voltage, DC link voltage to go to our voltage so a fall right through technique is suggested to ensure that the extra surplus power is uh, successfully uh, reduced and uh, uh, and uh, DC, our, uh, DC voltage is uh, ensured to be in the limit in case of the fault so the proposed fault right through strategy performs very well is it ensures that minimum current is uh, minimum current is in, uh, increased during the AC fault and uh, stress on the power switches is also reduced uh, in the introduction portion first uh, it is discuss why do we prefer to use HVDC then a comparison between uh, then a discussion between LCC HVDC and VAC HVDC is done it is shown why VAC HVDC is better than LCC we have already covered these questions you can refer to our <coughs> previous videos sorry so this is a uh, this is a model a single line diagram of the model which is used in this research paper so right now as we can see the fault is happening at uh, here point of common coupling 2 V2 at grid 2 uh, this is basically voltage source converter and not MMC and SPWM switch pulse width modulation uh, is used sinusoidal pulse width modulation is used at switching frequency of 2.1 kilohertz so basically now if here happens the fault at the grid 2 and if there will be no AC fault right through technique then the DC hour voltage uh, would happen and this DC hour voltage uh, will have burned the overall uh, will have affected the overall system and the converters have should have tripped and there could be damage of the equipment or converter stations so there is a necessity to uh, to imply a fault right through technique so fault the job of fault right through technique is to ensure that uh, uh, during this problem uh, the, the, during here three phase to short circuit if there happens three phase to ground fault uh, which is a severe critical AC fault even then the uh, DC voltage does not go into our voltage region and here the DC voltage should be maintained uh, this is the uh, purpose of the paper and how it ensures basically uh, the applied active power command is made sensitive to voltage magnitude variation at PCC1 and PCC2 so if there happens fault either at PCC1 or PCC2 then active power is related to that voltage magnitude variation uh, active power active power will limit itself will change itself corresponding to changes made into the point of common coupling 1 and point of common coupling 2 means if uh, it will see if there is a voltage interruption at PCC2 or voltage dip into the PCC2 then it will assume that now basically the fault has happened and depending upon this fault this fault will communicate uh, to converter station 1 and converter station 1 will be supposed to reduce its uh, power uh, so power reduction technique will happen here in this case so this applied active power at uh, here in this case uh, here uh, uh, here the surplus power will be reduced in order to ensure that DC our voltage is not happening here at DC cable all right this applied active power command is made sensitive to voltage magnitude variation at PCC1 and PCC2 this modification allows VAC1 to adjust active power command to measure the amount of transfer power as the voltage magnitude PCC1 and PCC2 decrease as a result of AC faults. 
as a result, the proposed recovery strategy can eliminate trapped energy in DC link and prevent DC link voltage as discussed. In the worst cases, such as solid three-phase fault at PCC1 or PC2, the maximum current contribution from VAC1 or VAC2 is limited to reactive current component IQMX corresponding to the converter maximum reactive power capability as P is equal to zero and I is equal to zero. Figure 1C shows the control systems for converter VAC2. So hey, this is a control diagram. Let, let us quickly have a review of this. So as already discussed, now at converter station 1, this active power, uh, this reference value active power is adjusted depending upon the uh, this voltage V2 and uh, and this voltage uh, I mean here is the V2 I mean here is the uh, here is the V1 voltage which is coming from here and here is the V V2 voltage this is V2 voltage here so if there happens that uh, any change, any dip, any interruption in AC voltage at point of common coupling so accordingly the changes will be made into the active power reference to ensure that fault ride through technique is happening so the here we can see that that uh, uh, converter station 2 is responsible to control the DC voltage so this outer loop control for DC voltage and AC voltage whereas converter station 1 is responsible for controlling the active power and AC voltage so changes in active power will be made depending upon the point of common coupling voltage on converter station 1 V1 and converter station 2 V2 so if there will be some problem according the power will be adjusted so this is a PI controller used so as we know the active power is adjusted by changing the D current of the component ID max in uh, you can refer to details of the control in our previous videos and uh, uh, then uh, th this is this is basically inner current control we uh, we have already defined inner current control in our previous videos uh, then DQ to ABC transformation is happening then this SPWM technique is used given to the switches similarly here DC voltage control is performed then this is the inner current control similarly back DQ to ABC and then switching signals are given alright let's discuss simulation results now basically case 1 is the 3 phase fault which is happening and the case 2 is line to line ground fault so first we discuss 3 phase fault which is basically more critical and severe uh, the fault is for 7 cycles 50 hertz 140 milliseconds uh, so let's discuss the results. You can see here that uh, fault is basically happening at uh, grid 2 and due to its voltage magnitude due to the three phase fault this voltage dip becomes there the voltage dip and the voltage interruption zero voltage here and uh, now this uh, this voltage V2 at uh, will uh, as the power uh, th there, uh, this will communicate to converter station 1 because depending upon the fault happening at either of the PCC 1 or 2 uh, the active power needs to be uh, reduced so uh, this is the so this sorry here so you see here as the fault is happened now active power is limited and reduced to zero voltage so surplus power is not uh, so this this is basically power reduction if this power would have not reduced then this surplus power here this power would have caused our voltage but this is now reduced to zero and so power imbalance is avoided and thus we see our voltage is avoided so after the fault disappears this again goes to its normal value and you can see DC link voltage has just uh, rise from 600 to 606 means very low value means ke means that it's the controller is working uh, the fault right through technique is working perfectly fine 
it will less the change in the DC link voltage less than one percent following the standards. Uh, voltage magnitude at PCC one. You see this dip at, at PCC two does not majorly affect the voltage magnitude at PCC one. This is very slightly disturbed. Doesn't matter. And uh, another thing, you see uh, this is a three phase fault happening during this three phase fault. You see that uh, the current has increased, but this current waveform at PCC2 has not gone above the limits. It's touching one per unit. Uh, uh, it means that the, uh, the, uh, the, the converter stations can handle this uh, overcurrent because it's a minimum overcurrent. So there will be no problem for the converter stations. All right. So this was three phase fault. This is now line to line fault. The case two is line to line fault. Let's quickly have a review on line to line fault. So you see uh, the fault is fault duration will be mentioned here, which is uh, 140 millisecond at T is equal to one second. So therefore, there happens the dip in the at the point of common coupling voltage dip at PCC2. Due to this, uh, we see that uh, active power will be uh, reduced at converter station 1. And when it will return to its normal values, this will uh, return to its normal values. And now, even the our current has reduced as compared to previous case. And this DC voltage has just gone up from 600 to 600.2. So this is a very slight disturbance. The AC far-right two technique is perfectly working. This is the, the, the this is the situation for power and reactive power at 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 PCC two. And uh, we can see that the values have returned to its normal values after the fault right through. So if we compare the proposed recovery strategy as, as compared with DC chopper, uh, some of the researchers have uh, proposed DC chopper. I mean this surplus power uh, which is happening in this case, the surplus power instead of reducing this uh, uh, power, surplus power at uh, VAC converter station 1 at point of common coupling 1, uh, some of the researchers have installed a DC chopper here, a DC link, to dissipate that surplus power. Uh, this is another way to overcome uh, that issue, and this is another fault right through technique. But in, uh, including a DC chopper basically uh, adds more cost to the system, and uh, uh, and it will increase the foot restriction of the converter. Power losses will certainly increase. Uh, but this proposed strategy, uh, the uh, disadvantage of this proposed strategy is that it requires communication. But uh, recent research states that sometimes communication may fail or there may be delay in the communication. So this, uh, uh, this uh, proposed strategy is not reliable in recent literature review. And uh, researchers are also uh, uh, working to to suggest and invent novel DC choppers uh, that should have reduced cost and that should that should have less effect on the station of the footprint. So researchers are actively working to uh, uh, to on the area of DC chopper because DC choppers are the most reliable. But the problem is they increase the station footprint. Their cost is very high. So researchers are working on these components so that to reduce their cost and to reduce the foot station footprint. So novel DC choppers are being designed. And this strategy is uh, rejected in uh, current literature review just because that uh, uh, communication itself requires extra cost and there is a less, uh, this is a less reliable system because communication may fail. And if the distance is very high, then communication uh, challenge will increase. Uh, and moreover, uh, this proposed technique in this paper is not suitable for connection with weak system. Here we can see that two AC grids are connected. What if the uh, one side there's a weak power plant? So this strategy will fail in this case. 
However, the advantage of this strategy is no power losses, low cost, less effect, no effect on the station of the footprint. So this was the uh, conclusion. Uh, this is the conclusion of this paper. Uh, the fault right through technique is shown in the results works very fine, and uh, uh, it ensures that uh, DC hour voltage is not happening. Thank you.